cross. The Crusaders in black. Really hungry for a win at two and 11 overall. Loyola six and six. They're looking for their sixth win in their last eight. And the Greyhounds with the first possession. Over to one of the twins. That would be Milos Illich with the miss from the corner. Three point opportunity. Holy Cross swinging the ball around. Loyola coming out in the man. Bo Montgomery. We're going to go over the starting lineups in just a second here. Pulling up from just left of the elbow there. No good from Martindale. Let's take a quick look at the Crusaders starting five. Bo Montgomery, a 6'5 sophomore guard out of Memphis, Tennessee. Kyrell Luke, the freshman guard, the leading scorer on this team, number four. Jarrell Gates. 6'6", 240, senior forward, number 10. Boy, is he put together, and he's got scoring and rebounding in his game. Sophomore Judson Martindale, number 33. The best of a group of three or four real good three-point shooters on this team. And rounding out the starting five, a uh, bit of a surprise start. He's been coming off the bench mainly this year, but Luth Kolibali, the 6'9", sophomore forward from Ottawa, Ontario. And Milos Illich that time gets it done. 2 nothing Loyola. Jim, how about the Loyola starters? Yeah, Greyhounds. Kenny Jones starting at the guard. Leads a conference in assists right now. Cam Spencer leads a conference in scoring. Right now, it's good to see Jalen Andrews back, who was out the last game versus Navy. Milos Illich, who we just saw with the nice bucket down low. And the big man player to watch today, Golden DK, the 6'10 junior from Spain. And Gates left alone on the baseline there. Nice mid-range shot. Kind of pushed it up there. And how about throwing it down is DK. And the assist goes to one of the best assists to turnover guys in the country, let alone the Patriot League, Cam Spencer. Yeah, good spacing there in transition. Cam Spencer waited until the defense committed, and that's just an easy touch pass and an easy flush there by Golden DK. 4-2 Greyhounds in the early going. Good defense underneath. DK caused that shot to be missed. And the follow-up attempt by Martindale, he's now 0 for 2. He shoots almost 41% from beyond the arc. So head coach Brett Nelson of Holy Cross, he wants Martindale to take that shot all night long. Nelson in his third season for the Crusaders, assisted by R.J. Evans, Sam Ferry, and Joe Kennedy. And Loyola in his fourth season leading this team. Tavares Hardy, assisted by Ivo Simovic, Taj Finger, and Tiny Adams. 4-2, it remains here early. Good aggressiveness by Golden. DK getting some touches down in the paint and in that elbow, so getting DK involved heavily earlier in the game. He heard you in the pregame, Jim Chivers. Yeah, this you is said it's time, Golden. It is time. Look inside now, you got a mismatch down low. Good pass. Jones, nice rotation. And Kenny Jones, who has been so good at the point, came in as a shooter first and a shooter second. And oddly, the shot's just not quite falling yet this year, but Jalen Andrews initiating contact. Almost like an assist from number two off the, off the glass. Golden DK flush. Good things happen when you sprint and run the floor for the big man and perfect flush, nice finish there. And I like the way the big man's got things going here early in the game. Four points and two boards in the first three and a half minutes. That ain't bad. Luke puts it on the floor looking for contact. Nothing there. And DK active with his third board. Now Spencer pushing the pace. Jones doing the same. Andrews high up for that pass. And Andrews drains it. Jalen. Missed that game up at Army. Might have been the difference if he was out there. We'll never know, but we know what a difference he makes for Loyola, Jim. Big time. Yeah, big time to have Andrews back in the lineup. We had a chance to talk to him before the game for a few minutes, and he's excited to be back in the lineup, and he knows how important today is to get in the win column early in the Patriot League play. 9-2 Greyhounds and a chance to stretch the lead even more. DK with the lob. Spectacular afternoon by Cam Spencer who forced OT with an impossible three. 
as he jacks one up for the first time, and Cam looks like he's tuned up nicely. Yeah, Cam's looking great tonight, as, as we talked about Gary, the army shot to send the game into overtime, fading away, two guys, hands in his face, and he lands right on the Loyola bench to send it to overtime, but and listen, Gary, Loyola didn't play since oh, December 14th, miss a game, we're gonna play Duke, we're gonna play Maryland, both those games were canceled because of, because of COVID, so, you know, you were expecting some rust. Nice pass, good. Wow. I think somebody was ball watching there. That would be uh, Koulibaly, because Illich just said bye-bye. Yeah, when you're playing Loyola, you cannot me, Jim. fall asleep in the backdoor cut. And excellent backdoor there by Illich. Good pass there, Kenny Jones finding his teammate. And the Greyhounds are off and running. And on, Martindale's gonna try it again. And that worked out better. Maybe dribble in and get a little better look, a little closer, and we'll see if that turns his offensive game around because he was coming up zeros there. Number 12, Malcolm Townsell came in out of that break for Holy Cross. The Greyhounds right now are riding those five starters. Why not? Spencer effortlessly. I mean, nobody stepped over to stop him, and his instincts are so good. Spencer just continued on and went up easily. Well, I think everyone layup. in the gym thought he was going to pass it to his teammate Illich there. Yeah. And just the creativity and the craftiness there by, by Spencer to take that extra dribble and simple layup for Spencer. 16-6. Martindale gets his own miss back, and now he'll go to the line. Velko Illich, yeah, too the many other half of the Twins is going to get called for the foul. Sorry about that, Gary, but too many Greyhounds were looking to get out and sprint there and leak out in the transition. I think all white jerseys put a body on them, get a rebound, secure the rebound first, and then get out in transition. Also, the dreaded back of the iron, long rebound. It's harder than it looks, isn't it, when you're at the offensive end on a miss like that? It's hard to, like, position yourself if you're a big guy in the paint area. That thing just shot up right to Martindale. It was almost like he passed it to himself. Martindale on the board again now with three. Both Illich brothers in the game now. David Brown. David also Brown, the freshman, six in. five. In for Loyola. We figured Tavares Hardy's gonna try to play as many as ten, maybe more tonight. This team, as Coach Hardy was talking to me earlier about just needed to get back in shape. Since that December 12th win over Hampton, which by the way makes Loyola 4-0 in this gym, trying to make it 5-0 this evening, three weeks have gone by, and the foul by Gates is gonna put Illich on the line. But this team, because of the COVID interruption before and extending beyond the Christmas holiday, they had not practiced together for the entire three weeks. Yesterday was the first real full workout since prior to the Hampton game, which was preceding final exams, Jim. Yeah, and you could tell versus Army, they were not ready for the pace of play and the style of play versus Army. They were a little disjointed on the offensive side and 24 turnovers versus Army, Gary, but heck of a comeback there in the second half on the road. Illich makes one of them, 17-7. The lead remains at 10 for Loyola. And, and this is one thing defensively for the Greyhounds. We've seen a little 1-3-1, and you watch the rotation for the guards up top. The communication is there. Hands are up. Everyone's looking for deflections to close these passing li lanes, but I've seen some excellent zone here by the Greyhounds, but Luke is a player to watch here quickly. And, and Luke got rid of that pass and didn't move a hair. He was waiting for the ball to come right back to him. That's nice basketball. Spencer thought it was going to come right back to Cam. Nice job fighting for the rebound. And Montgomery. Too easy. Little life. Kind of a secondary break there, and Loyola was a little flat-footed on D, 17-12. Yeah, he got the ball there at half court and took a couple dribbles and had a wide-open pull-up there at the free-throw line. There's the freshman, Brown. Good-looking player, very savvy player. Getting significant minutes already in his first year. Spencer finding Jones in the corner, and he's short. And he's in. Unbelievable. 
Will that turn it around for Kenneth Jones? Just like he drew it up, right? Coach Hardy drew it up that exact play, but Kenny Jones will take it any way he wants. Easy steal there for Illich. To Jones, back to Illich, and he just wasn't ready on the bounce. No fault of the point guard there. Martindale makes Loyola pay. That's a blown opportunity, and we've got a six-point advantage for Loyola, 20 to 14. Greyhound six of the last seven. Spencer on the catch, delivery. Mm. Got to catch that Gotta one go in. stronger. Yeah, go up stronger, go right to the rim. It has to be a dunk. Boy, Martindale's just firing away. Holy Cross was one for its first eight. Just dreadful. And they've managed to scratch and make a few and make a couple of stops. Down six, 11.30 to go in this first half. Both teams 0-1 with losses in their opener in Patriot League play. Spencer off there badly. Thought Luke was going to pull up right there at the elbow around that foul line, but he passed it off, and it worked its way to Gates, and it worked out for the Crusaders. Yeah, a couple easy ones here for the Crusaders now in transition. We saw an uncontested layup, and now an uncontested pull-up here for Holy Cross, and you start to build a little momentum. Here comes the energy. But for the Greyhounds offensively, you keep cutting back door. You're getting just about anything you want. Another double on Spencer. They're not going to let him keep waltzing through that lane. The last minute and a half, nothing much going offensively. Eight for 15 overall, Loyola from, from the floor. Three threes for the Hounds. All five starters for Loyola have scored already. And Alonzo Fare, the sophomore from Spain, out there with his fellow Spaniard, Golden DK. Alonzo getting his first run this evening. Deep. Common foul on each of the fellas. So all that for just a common foul, Gary. And we uh, we could have gone and got food if there was food to get. <laughs> Cam Spencer checking back in for the Greyhounds, coming in for David Brown. And that's going to be a travel call on Caleb Kenny, the 6'6 freshman guard forward swing guy. Yeah, you talk about this roster, Gary, Holy Cross roster, very, very young. At times, they could be playing four freshmen and a sophomore, and you know, they're a young team. A 14-man roster, seven sophomores and four freshmen, and then three seniors. So they looked young in that first four or five minutes, but they looked older after that, and Andrew's got a great look. No good. Under 10 in this first half. Loyola's won the last three in this series. The teams have played each other 20 times, Holy Cross with an 11-9 edge. And of course, they've been competing against each other as Patriot League opponents since 2013. Wow, and Wade Jackson. We're gonna see an opportunity here for a four-point play. And that's Dejan Humphrey with the three in your face. Woo. And Jackson. Retreats to the bench. Kenny Jones replaces him. Yeah, and expect Humphrey to get a lot of playing time today with R.J. Johnson, who he, you know, usually a starter for Holy Cross, all rookie team last year. He's out with an injured knee. Yep, and that's bad for this team. And a chance to tie there with the four-pointer, no good. But Humphrey did his job, and it's a one-possession game now, under 9:30 to go. Jones with the swing pass to Spencer. Pull up. DK, little tangle. Yeah, these two are going at it. Yeah, these two have been going to get called. They've been going at it since that last play. Rabinovich and DK. It's a lot of length and a lot of arms getting tangled up between those two right there. And Gary, you've talked about the history between these two. Don't forget last year where these two teams are supposed to play in the Patriot League tournament, but Holy Cross had to cancel the game because of COVID. Missed the tournament. They haven't played since the 19-20 uh, regular season. By the way, that's two fouls on Rabinovich. Andrews is pulling his way to the basket. So creative. He saw the mismatch, got his defender out on the wing a little bit. Nice little crossover and going strong to the rim. A lot of contact, no call. Second leading scorer on the Greyhounds coming in, 14.2 per game. He's played in every game but that Army game, and he is back. 
Loyola fishing for a turnover there. 1-3-1 one, one zone for the Greyhounds. Good deflection and got a steal. Shot clock was under five already, so that possession was in danger, but Loyola took care of business there. DK, thought he was going to hand it off. Now, why didn't he take on 32? Jones, long range, no good. Greyhound's getting good looks, and Jones got that wide open look because of Cam Spencer's hard back cut. That took all the attention to Spencer in the back cut. Sent two defenders his way, and Jones, you'll take that all day with the wide open look. Another turnover by Holy Cross. 22-19, Greyhounds. They've had the lead the entire half. It got all the way down to one just a few seconds ago. Now Spencer doubled up on the baseline, draws the contact. He's really good at that. What isn't this guy good at, Jim? And, and he, he's so patient. He, he notices wait, he waits and see what the defense is giving him. He uses a couple ball fakes. As that's going to send Spencer to the line, I believe we are in one bonus one, now. Yes. Seventh foul on Holy Cross. He does it everything. Gets deflections, gets stops, gets out in transition, can step outside and hit the ball in the yard. Leads the Patriot League in scoring. Leads the Patriot League in steals. Leads the Patriot League in assist to turnover ratio, 3.9 to 1. Oh, by the way, that's fifth best in Division One. You dig and he's an 89% free throw shooter. You dig deeper, you can find some more. I think if it's taken charge of with a stat, he'd be up there too. Drawing fouls. Good defense of pressure by the Greyhounds. Spencer, did interesting note on the third year head coach of Holy Cross. Yeah, year number three, as you said, and he's got a super young team, but Brett Ness Nelson was a heck of a player. Played at University of Florida, graduated in 2004. Top three pointers made at the University of Florida, second in steals in school has history. That at Brett Florida. Nelson. That That's guy. Brett Nelson. <laughs> and, and you talk about the players that come out of Florida. There was a guy from South Dakota named Mike Miller. And for you to step up, Brett Nelson, wow. and have that record. And Humphrey just stepped up again to make this a two point contest as we wind down towards seven minutes remaining in this first half. Good half. Seemed like Loyola had the edge early with just the sheer speed and ball movement, and Holy Cross is caught up. Andrews got the look, did not get the bucket. Yeah, uh, Greyhounds need to get back to establishing the presence in the interior. Agreed. Getting some post touches, swinging the ball and ball reversals. DK is such a great passer when he catches the ball on the paint. And Andrews with the left hand. Nick Marshall in the corner, the there freshman. Clarksburg, Maryland. Nick How about Nick? With a little point to let Rabinovich know that you got to come out and contest me. I don't think he'll make that mistake a second time. He might have gotten stuck on a bad switch, too. That's an awkward place for a big one. Another shot from the corner, way off. That was Nolan Dorsey. And here comes Jalen Andrews. Spencer. No contact, huh? All right. Andrews squares up. DK. Uh, late whistle. DK does not like that. Wow. A as Spencer, he is not happy with himself either. Okay. Couple easy looks. Kenny Jones passed up an open look there in the wing. Gave it up to Jalen Andrews. Watch a push right there. Yeah, you, you push off, big man. And yep. you got the referee standing right next to you. That possession had nothing but promise, and it just all went downhill fast. Spencer, I, you know, he didn't come up arguing. That was a clean block, but three guys left their feet, and he jumped right in the middle of it, and nobody fouled him. I mean, credit to the Crusaders. 27-22, Loyola, six minutes to go in a chippy and competitive first half. Yeah, and when you're in Patriot League play, Gary, those are missed opportunities that you need to take advantage of. And Humphrey with Andrews on him. Jalen stepping out closer to three. Martindale Good underneath. Defense. 
Good and team defense. I talked about the on-ball defense, the pressure, the contests, the smothering D all over Luke. Boy, that baseline just shut down. Great D indeed. Greyhounds would like to get this back out to uh, double digits. That's not being too greedy. Up five. Andrews backing down Humphrey. Good defense by Humphrey and a nice stand by the Crusaders. I like the no call too by the referees. Yeah. Letting them play down though. Luke over to Humphrey. Humphrey good. The two guards, number four and number three, Luke and Humphrey, they figured something out. And Loyola just a little unsettled, Jim, getting yeah. back and settled and marking their men. And here we go again with the turnover from the Greyhounds. And the foul to be on Jones. And Luke is going to go to the line and shoot two. And could be tied. In Patriot League play, Gary, it's the little things that make a huge difference. Talking about jogging back in transition, you, the careless turnovers that we saw right here at the top of the key, which is going to lead to two here at the free throw line. Now a one point game. 5 0 3 remaining. And, and that's one of the things we saw versus versus Army is the issues with the turnovers because of trying to play too fast and not being used to the pace of play since not playing since middle of December. Being kind of out of shape. A lot of factors. When you take three weeks off that were not scheduled and you can't practice together or practice at all for a big chunk, you're going to lose some, some traction. Loyola looked like they regained a lot of it in the second half. They made stops and they continued to just pump the offense right. And they never stopped scoring in that game. Spencer with the pull up, no good. And Cam frustrated right now, stuck at seven. Seven points that is. Kenny almost traveled. And the three from the corner. And just like that, Holy Cross gets its first lead. 30 to 27. We got us a ball game, Jim Chivers. All right, all starting with Golden DK when he had to come off floor in foul trouble. That's when Holy Cross started to build their lead. I believe you're right. No backside help there. Now the Ilch twins got to take this offense home for the rest of this half, it appears. And Marshall miscommunicated with Andrews and Loyola out of sorts. Yeah, and just you can tell. Uh, Jalen Andrews has, hasn't been with this team for just about a week and a half and just a little out of sync here and disjointed with the offense. Alonzo Fare at the ready in the substitution area for Loyola and has lost nine of those 11 games by anywhere from 12 to 30 points. They are in this ball game. Kenny underneath. And they're going to call the foul, looks like, on Milos Illich. That'll be his first. Yeah, and now. He thought he could get away with that shove, but no way. Kenny going to be at the line in a one and one opportunity. These games have just become grinded out affairs and small margin for error. And I think the Greyhounds. You know, they got away from sprinting back and defense and identifying shooters and boxing out and rebounding. Playing fast, they mm -hmm. kind of just started to downshift. It's a 9-0 run in the last almost three minutes for Holy Cross to take this lead, their first lead of the game. And they've now extended it to a two-possession lead. As Alonzo Fare hands it off to Nick Marshall, pulls up. Good shot, good look. Can't make it. The drought continues for Loyola. Yeah, not sure if that's the look you want with Marshall. A couple of hands, contest in the face, get a couple more ball reversals. Holy Cross is a team that does not want to play defense that long. You get a couple post touches, and that's why I go back to Golden DK, so important on the floor, does a lot of things. Boy, the two-man game between Luke and Martindale, pretty. Just moving around the floor, mirroring each other, and the shot just doesn't go down for luck. Marshall, there it is. That makes up for the miss the last time down the floor. Yeah, good bucket for the Greyhounds. That's exactly what you need now. Now try to get a quick stop. 
Is that going to be on Milos? That's going to be his third. I think that's his second. <clears throat> and it doesn't. Let's see if uh, a sub comes up. Oh, David Brown just gets off the bench, the, so, the uh, freshman guard. Humphrey, boy, he's had a good half. Came in off the bench in the middle of this half and affected this game immediately. He's got 10, leading everybody. A couple of rebounds as well. And he makes them both, and the lead's back to three, 33-30 for the Crusaders. Spencer brings the ball up. Marshall hounded, and that's the kind of foul you don't want your best player to collect with 2.49 remaining in the first half, but yeah. Luke did it. And you can tell Coach Nelson over there in the sidelines putting both of his hands on his face and asking, what are you doing? You're 30 feet away from the hoop. Right, you're in front of me. <laughs> and, and Marshall was in retreat, you know, having to reset. It's just, uh, hey, it's amateurs, right, Jim? Nick Marshall had some nicks and bruises to start this season. And about five games in, he started to come back in and get some minutes. And Tavares Hardy just loves the IQ of both Brown and Marshall. And they're long dudes. I mean, Brown's big. Yeah. He's about 6'5", 215. Nick's more about a, like a 180, 185 type. But they're both out there together with Spencer, Fare and Jalen Andrews, and this looks like a pretty decent combination. A lot of length, and not the best shot. Left-handed fading. Koulibaly with the miss, and now Spencer looking for contact. Wow. So smooth with the Euro step and the touch with the right hand. Like he made it up on the spot. He gets off balance, he gets the contact, and. Excellent touch there by Spencer. And gives Loyola back the lead at 34-33. Yeah, Colabali's going to be called there now on yep. the legal screen. So just like that, the momentum heading towards Loyola's favor. And this lineup may end up finishing this half, Jim. I think they're creating some matchup issues, particularly among the bigs for Holy Cross, because these are long and quick. 6'4", six, 6'5", six, guys that know what they're doing, and everybody can put the ball on the deck. Yeah, I'd like to see a couple post touches, get a few ball reversals, couple backdoor cuts, see if you can get Holy Cross falling asleep here in defense. There it is, there good it, pass. Exactly. Nice post entry pass, too, right where a big man wants it. You kept it high, nice pass, David Brown, Fowry, good finish. His staff, yeah, He's spreading those minutes around. They understand the role here at Loyola, fearless freshmen that both play hard. Kenny, Martindale, he's been really good this half with eight points. Kenny gathers himself and just couldn't get it to go. Got bumped coming through the paint at Tad. And now Brown, Andrews, Fare. And he gets bailed out. Oh! Yeah, I don't know, Gary. That happened right in front of us. I thought Holy Cross got a deflection. Well, Wade Jackson didn't offer any resistance. Tavares Hardy appears to be fine, so I guess we're blind. Because I thought the same thing, Jim. Yeah, I don't agree with many calls that officials make, and certainly not that one right there. Yeah. But I guess the optics weren't good, but, you know, I'm wearing bifocals, so. You are getting just about 60 here. Oh, he's been on for a while. 36, 33, it remains. 45 seconds to go. Humphrey, air ball. Ball's gonna go back to the Hounds. And you go to the previous possession that Holy Cross had. They got a nice touch right in the middle of the paint and they got away from that a little bit. Loyola is given that opportunity for Holy Cross. As you got the bigs flashing in the middle. For Holy Cross, you get them a touch. That's a good look for Holy Cross. Yep. Loyola, as fast as the offense deserted them, the substitution changes. And then you got Spencer, who's always the straw that stirs the drink. And it's back to looking smooth again. We'll see if they can keep that going into the half. Andrews pulls up. Andrews with the three. Greyhounds get a stop now here. Get the momentum going down in the locker room for halftime. 
Shot clock is off. Game clock is down to 10, 39-33 Greyhounds. Holy Cross has really answered impressively. Luke dumps it down low to Martindale. The foul by Brown, and that's gonna be a three-point opportunity. And Holy Cross determined not to lose ground on Loyola. That's good offense. Yeah, good offense. Watch the cut here back door, high off the backboard. For well, Martindale. Once Martindale got through that little gap, it was over. He had all the, the vertical principles on his side, so it's hard. They're going to be in any game. And there's crazy things that happen in the Patriot League. And we expect Loyola to come out with a little bit of energy and a little bit of bounce coming off that 9-2 run. I think for Loyola, pay attention to your defensive closeouts. Get out, sprint out with a hand up, and no open looks here for Holy Cross. Both starting lineups at it. As we begin the second half, Luke. Gates. Nice job keeping his feet by Illich. And they're going to call Illich? I think they're going to call that Spencer uh, on the reach in. This is Cam Spencer's first foul here. That's his first foul, yeah. Yep. But we had an opportunity to. And, and you look at Gates, Gary, and just how thick he is and how powerful he is down there in the paint. And he hasn't had an opportunity that much in the paint with the ball. Very crafty footwork down low. He's got a lot of muscle behind him, and he looks almost like a fullback. Or an outside linebacker that can rush the quarterback. Oh, Montgomery announces his presence. He was fairly quiet in the first half, had a three-point bucket. And that's his second one. Yeah, 39 38. Sophomore from Memphis, Tennessee. 6 5 guard that has some good length at the guard position. Has really good range, as we saw right there. And Montgomery checking Spencer. Now, Spencer trying to use DK, but that screen didn't work. Oh, DK in position for an impossibly good pass. And, and wow. How about the vision, too? And, and Holy Cross got away with a little bit too much ball watching, which led to that nice little pass there by Cam Spencer. And the touch by Spencer, too, just hard enough to deliver it, but not so it was going to go through Golden's hands. That's, that's a difficult play. There's that footwork there by the big guy. No good. No finish, but great move. Quick spin, wow. yeah. Kenny Jones trying to get loose. And there, Illich just not thinking on the same page with his point guard. And we've seen that a lot here for the Greyhounds. If you penetrate and get inside of the paint, Holy Cross will cave in a little bit, and you'll get a lot of open looks there in the perimeter if you can kick it out effectively. Yeah, Milos just kind of opened the gate there and moved a little too quickly because he's got permission to shoot that one. Also, Gates doubled up there. Luke off the mark. Spencer with the board. 41-38, two minutes in here in the second half. Jones, Andrews, can't believe he passed that shot up. Spencer from the corner, good. <laughs> Spencer had a really good look, was patient, and still even had an even better look there in the corner. When nice touch. When you're as good a passer as Spencer is, don't you think it leaves the defenders in a lurch? It puts like, a lot of pressure on the defense. Gates draws the contact, and if you're going to foul him, make him earn foul it. him hard, yep. Andrews. Yep, make him earn it there. And that's how good Gates is. You've got the power dribble, left hand. Watch a power dribble. You've got the pump fake, up in the air, going oh. hard. And, and I'm really impressed with the way Gates plays. DK wanted no parts of that, partly because he's playing with two fouls. Yeah. But he, you see him just kind of retreat a half a step, like, oh, go ahead, do something with the ball. Yeah, Gates, he's been asked to do it all this season. You know, one of the strongest forwards in the league. Newcomer of the year last year in the Patriot League. Nice footwork in the post. Uses the spin move effectively on the block. Makes it 44-40. And, and look at Gates. He had a really good game versus Navy. And the big man for Navy, Juku, who's one of the best big mans in the league, has struggles against Gates. I could see where he'd make a few of his kind struggle with that kind of girth. Strength, quickness. 
I mean, he's got a little flow in his game. And obviously it's important for Holy Cross's chances that he avoid a quick third or any kind of foul trouble. And right there, the defense just avoided their attention on Illich. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Good little two-man play right there. Nice quick pass. Even better cut there by Illich. Right down Broadway Street with the flush. Martindale short. Nice rebound. Gates. Luke step on the line. Yeah, it's right in front of the yeah. bench. Stepped on the line. Turnover there on the other side of the court, Gary. Greyhounds get a ball. And Loyola up six now with a chance to uh, separate a tad. Greyhounds going into that end of the first half with seven of their last eight. It's a nice run put together for the Greyhounds. DK just dribbled himself into some trouble. It's going to stay with Loyola. That was a tie-up? Yeah, jump ball. Watch a replay here. Here's Luke. And anytime, Gary, we talk about this all the time. If you're a big man, you put it down on the floor. Expect the guard to come and either steal it or tie it up right there. And that's exactly what Luke did. Boy, he's lucky that Golden didn't throw him. <laughs> <laughs> he's learning. See, yeah, Golden's go temper is under is. control. We're proud of him. As a freshman, I don't know that it would have turned out the same. Greyhounds reset. Shot clock at 15. Kenny Jones on the drive. Nice, nice kick out to Andrews. Shot no good. Good pass. And you, you can tell the Greyhounds are getting a lot of open looks. Cannot just convert here as they're 7 for 17 from the three. And they're going to call the foul here on Martindale. Martindale, yeah. Yeah, Martindale with his second. Whistled for that one. Nobody call him Wink, please. Now they're giving Brett Nelson a warning here as Brett Nelson is, is being very vocal to the refs. And not that many fans here at Reeds Arena because of COVID restrictions. All the students are gone. And, and it's January the 4th, and it's cold outside. It is cold. <laughs> we got a lot of snow out there and the spin move by Illich. How about DK? Boy, Jalen Andrews getting fed well. He needs to cash in. Still got eight points and four rebounds, but Loyola missed a couple of golden opportunities. And right there, that guy, Humphrey, makes them pay. What a game he's having. 14 points for Deshaun Humphrey. Sophomore, 6'4 guard out of Detroit. And here go the Crusaders. And now their bench erupts as Luke finishes that sloppy exchange for Loyola. Yeah, two very sloppy exchanges. Coming back on defense, bad communication on defense, wide open look, and just another careless turnover for the Greyhounds led to an easy two. Back to a one-point lead for Loyola. Just when you think there's a little foot on the pedal a tad, it's not. DK, too much touch, too soft. And now Holy Cross with a chance to retake the lead. Ooh, Ooh. pretty, pretty, pretty. Wow. Timeout, Tavares Hardy, Loyola. Energized are the Crusaders. Wow. And the ball handling and the craftiness, watch the crossover right here. Gets DK out behind the back, right to the rim, high off the backboard for Luke. And Andrews was in kind of no man's land right there. He was under the bucket. That play was owned by Luke, and we're going to take a break. 47-46, Holy Cross, back in front. You're watching Loyola on ESPN. For the latest Patriot League news, follow the official league accounts on Twitter, at Patriot League, at Patriot underscore game day, and at Patriot League TV. Back in Baltimore, where Loyola finds itself trailing once again. Holy Cross caught up to him in the first half. Loyola reasserted at the end. We're up by six with a couple of golden opportunities to extend that lead to eight or nine and couldn't make the buckets. And now they're behind again. Kenny Jones looking for more than those three points that he scored earlier tonight. Spencer. No good. 
Fari missed time the leap there. Yeah, it's been it, that kind of stretch for Loyola. And, and I'll tell you what, Fari had about three or four really good screens at the top of the key to get that offensive going. Andrews just driving, bent on getting to the rim that time. 48-47, Greyhounds back in front, and back the lead goes to Holy Cross. And Gates got smacked right in the face, too. No call by the referee. They're letting them play. Fare with the left hand. Three lead changes in a blink of an eye, Jim. Here we go. 14 and minutes remaining. We've seen Fowry just improve so much the past couple of weeks. He's getting back healthy from the injury. He's getting back in shape, getting in the feel and the rhythm of things here for the Greyhounds. He's got four. Alonzo's probably going to want to be heard from some more in this game because of his injured knee. You know, that's a type of player you're losing. All-rookie team last year. Johnson ranked fourth in the league in assists last season. And for him to be out, it, who's the next man up? And that next man's been Humphrey. The fourth lead change. And there have been three of them really close together here. Ooh. Wow. That's, that's damaging. Yeah, let me see this replay on this. I thought it was a nice post-entry pass. And I'm not happy with that call uh, if I'm Coach Hardy. You know, Martindale's trying to get over the top of the side, and I think just lost his bounce a little bit. That's just a common battle down in the post. There might have been a little bit more of an extension with that arm. That was a weird angle that we just got. You're in the wide open, and referees are just looking to punch you up for a foul on that play. I'm not sure. I'd like to see it from another angle. But it's obviously costly, as that's four fouls on Milos Ilic. And his time is nearly done tonight. Loyola's well, gonna have to find some other combinations, and there we see David Brown again. The freshman who did so well teaming up with Nick Marshall. Just And Brown was more of a facilitator, just moving the ball. Nice there shot. Jalen Andrews finally waking up. Kenny Jones doing a nice job at the penetrate in the paint Excellent. with the no look kick out to Jalen Andrews, and finally, now Jalen gets a bucket there. 53-51, Andrews with 13 to go with four rebounds. Gates just pulls up, no good. Spencer, Andrews was right there with him. Yeah, if I'm the Greyhounds, that's okay. You want Gates to shoot that right there. He can do his damage when he's in the paint. Boy, Spencer lost it, regained it. All the while repositioning himself under the bucket. Just, yeah. just great ball. And, and almost a turnover by Jalen Andrews. Yeah. Excellent hands and catch and gather by Spencer. 55-51. The anchors of this offense, Andrews and Spencer, answering for Loyola. Under 12 minutes to go. Everything was roses. They beat Hampton to go 4-0 in this gym to really turn this season into a lot of optimism heading into the final exam break as that ball rattles out. But then it just became the odyssey. Final exam week yields its own, you know, no full practices, everybody's taking tests, etc. And the Greyhounds decide because Duke called as Spencer makes another bucket, the Greyhounds decide to take Duke up on an offer because Duke's opponent, Cleveland State, can't fulfill the contract because they've got COVID protocol issues. So Duke calls Goucher, Division Three friend up the road here in Towson, and says, can we get you back next year? We'll, you know, we'll take care of you. OK. They're about to leave for Duke, and they suddenly have COVID protocol questions. That extends past Christmas into losing the Maryland game down the road in College Park as David Brown does what he does. And here we are. Suddenly, Loyola doesn't play for three weeks and barely practices together over those three weeks. When, when you're in mid-December, and this is always an important time for a basketball team because the students are gone, you have almost a pro schedule where all you do is you focus on basketball. You have an opportunity to play Duke, an opportunity to play Maryland, which are really some confidence-building teams, and you can get better during those moments. Loyola gets hit with COVID. They're stuck for, what, seven, eight days where they can't play with each other, practice with each other, do anything. You've already lost two games. You lost two games, and so that's just a tough time for the Greyhounds. Boy, David Brown, how about it, huh? 
And then Martindale, another gift, which he hasn't provided since way back in the first half with an air ball, but Loyola Good pass. executing great offense. Fare stood up strong by that guy, that weightlifter, Gates. Great defense by the Hounds. Kenny Jones, Spencer in rhythm. Spencer good! And the Greyhounds right now, back where they haven't been since the first half, up by double digits, 62-51, under 10 minutes. Loyola with a little statement. Gates, Nick Marshall on him. Another turnover. Greyhounds want to run. Jones wants to flush. No, in and out. Uh, and that's Jones, too, had a good look there in the corner. Everything was good except the end of that sequence. Just a little too much. It looked like the Crusaders were disorganized and just, just a little sluggish getting back. And Loyola now, they're looking to really administer a blow here and take some confidence out of this team, get some of their heart. Marshall, nice bounce pass to Spencer, back to DK, and DK. Yeah, but David Brown saved embarrassment there by DK with the... Hey, he's, he's a good teammate. The lane violation, so... And we're back at it. 64-51, bottom line is the Greyhounds extended that lead. It's now 13, Gates, double team. Rabinovich. Decides to take that baseline shot. Good make. Yeah, Loyola Greyhound baited him. He, Binovich looked a little bit uncomfortable with the ball in the corner. And that's a tough angle right there along the baseline. And Rabinovich converted. 11-point ball game. Again, Brown and Marshall on the floor while the, the game gets really fast and Loyola executes beautifully at the offensive end. It's and, not a coincidence. And this last eight and a half is going to be won by toughness, Gary. As both teams are starting to turn it up a little bit, if diving on the floor for loose balls, who's going to win the rebound battle? Who's going to win in the paint? Can Loyola protect the paint? Well, you're, you're, you know, when you look at the way this game started, we find that we found out a few minutes before tip-off that R.J. Johnson, the all-rookie member last year in the Patriot League, a sophomore guard, was about to start his sixth game out of the eight he's played, and he's done for for the uh, time being anyway. He's got a knee injury. DK gets his own ball back. <laughs> and DK didn't even look at the rim. He just took the ball and ran out. Wow. And yeah, not a pretty <laughs> offensive play there by the Greyhounds. All kind of bouncing going on off yeah. the board. David Brown shooting the ball at the top of the backboard. Montgomery now. This Holy Cross tries to restore some order and Gates. Gets him back within single digits. Uh, good hands, too. <laughs> you, you pass the ball down low to Gates. He's going to catch it. He's got good footwork, good speed there in the post. The dude's 240-some pounds. He's like a ballerina. And Just my Minnesota Vikings are looking for a player, too. Yeah. DK hustling. Spencer, no good. Boy, Brown just got tossed. Cam Spencer with 19 points, six assists, Five rebounds, a steal, a block, and not a turnover. Wow. And what about the play right out of bounds right here? Wow. Kenny Jones finding Nick Marshall in the corner. He noticed that Holy Cross defense fell asleep a little bit. And a chance for a four-point play here for Nick Marshall. Incredible. Watch a pass right out of bounds underneath the hoop. All eyes are on Spencer and Jones right there. I mean, these freshmen are taking full advantage of it. Really, tonight is Marshall's night. David Brown had a great night at Army. Nick Marshall, double figures. It's his career high, 11 points. 67, 55, 7, 10 to go. Well, it's not firmly in control, but they're right on the edge of being in control of this ball game. Getting the looks they want. Passing the ball beautifully. 19 assists as a team. Spencer right back to the big guy. And he gives it up. And Andrews. Oh, it's got sprited a little bit there, Jalen Andrews. Kind of 
misjudge the distance of that rim. And Jalen's Ball's got a go back. little bit of a smile right there. And you do that at the playground, pick up basketball, you're going to get jokes. And I'm sure his teammates, mm. He might have said to DK, well, why didn't you go up and throw it <laughs> down? <laughs> no, but you talk about Cam Spencer, Gary. He just lifts the Greyhounds with his energy and effort. And guards that usually are the aggressor usually are the teams that win. Spencer with 19 points, Jalen Andrews with 13. Kenny Jones, a little bit of a struggle, only with three points tonight, but has helped his team build this lead in different ways. And he heard us right there. Nice pull up there, the escape dribble. Nice elevation on the jump shot, and Kenny Jones now has five. He was due, as they say. 69-55, biggest lead of the night for Loyola. 14 is Holy Cross starting to fade here. Luke out to Humphrey. Ooh. Looking for a travel there. Uh-huh. And he runs into that double team. Montgomery deep. Wow, they needed that. Nelson going to call timeout for the Crusaders. Keep it within a little bit arm's reach here. 11 points with 6.01 left. And I think ball pressure for the Greyhounds have to be really good here in this last six minutes. Or Tavares Hardy really upset with the Loyola defense right there. Just losing Montgomery, the one guy that they didn't account for. And he had all kinds of space and time. Four players in double figures now for Holy Cross. Humphrey, the leader, at 16, and then 10 each for Gates, Montgomery, and Martindale. And they're still down by 11. Spencer with 19, Andrews with 13, as you said. And how about another cheer for Marshall? David Brown with a huge game that almost helped lift Loyola to a tremendous comeback win. They lost in overtime at West Point over the weekend. And now it's the other freshman's turn, Nick Marshall. Great game. Yeah, confidence just continuing to build. Freshman from Clarksville, Maryland. He understands the game, Gary, and that, that's impressive. When you're a freshman and can read on both offense and defense and understanding that out-of-bounds play that Holy Cross was not paying attention to him in the corner. Milos Illich is on with his four fouls under six minutes. Ooh. DK backing his man down. Thought he was going to go for it. Now Spencer right back to the big man. Oh, it's going to stay with Loyola. Uh, DK wants that one right back too, and Spencer just putting, trying to drop a dime to DK, and a little bit too much of a spin there off of the rim, and also trying to calm him down. He is upset about that miss. And he's fired up. This is usually where he gets a foul right now too. <laughs> he's all fired up. Oh, they're going to call the, was that really a push? Did he just touch him? I, I think he got to give him the space when he came down yeah. too and took away. Hopefully he's okay. The only thing that's hurting is his pride right now. He's still thinking about that miss. Going to the bench now. Yep. So last 538 here, you got Fowry, Milos, Jalen Andrews, Cam Spencer. It's another interesting combination, more size. You still got the experience. Ooh, tough catch. I love it. The big man gets it done. I love it. And you talk about Milos leaving the ball high, Gary. Oh, yeah. And, and Kenny Jones put it right on the spot. He kept it high. He didn't bring it low. Above his shoulders, a good sky-high finish there with Milos. 13-point lead, 71-58 Loyola. Clock winding down to five minutes. Montgomery from the other corner. No good. Good contest. Spencer with the rebound. Good contest by Fowry, too. When you're six foot ten and you're sprinting out with hands up, that maybe interrupted the shot a little bit there for Holy Cross. 4.50 remaining. Loyola now going to set. Work the shot clock a little bit. Not a bad idea. Andrews isn't waiting. He's going to the line. And Andrews is so good at that. When he recognizes the mismatch out there and on the perimeter, he's going to make a move, create some contact, and now Andrews going to the free throw line looking to add to his 13. You don't tend to see hesitation in Jalen Andrews in his game. If he makes a mistake, he's moving fast. He commits and goes for it. And you know pretty much every coach would rather you make a mistake that way 
And it worked. I mean, he drew that contact automatic. And now Jalen Andrews trying to add to this lead with one more point. And he does it. Andrews now sitting on 15 points. Solid return. It's his first game since December 12th. It's only Loyola's second. And now, oh, it's going to stay with Loyola. Spencer yeah. got stripped. Good hustle by Luke, too, and very fast guard. He's I think he's a little bit up. in pain. Yeah, came down hard after the steal. Might have been that left knee. You look at Cairo Luke and the kind of night he's had. He's had nine points, as we talked about him early as a player to watch. Very talented offensive player, and, and he struggled versus Navy. Got in foul trouble, played only 15 minutes and fouled out. And Spencer, with the sparse crowd cheering, goes to the bench. Much deserved blow. And, and you and talk Marshall about Marshall comes back in. You talk about the sparse crowd here, Gary. And this is what the Greyhounds, I thought, have done a decent job is creating your own energy. And you're not going to get much from a crowd here. And, and Luke is hurt. You can see him bringing the ball down, and he's wincing in pain. He came down hard on that knee. Maybe the hip. It was a thump sound on this side, the other side of the floor. We could hear it, and he came up with that grimace. Lead is trimmed to 13. It's 73-60 with that made bucket for the Greyhounds. And the energy that he brought tonight, the big time plays. And he's back out on the floor. Has built this lead here, the Greyhounds, with 340 left in the ball game. And remember, he's a year and a half removed from major hip surgery. Yeah. He only played in 28 of the first 49 games he was part of this team. Very painful first couple of seasons, and then COVID. But boy, we are watching a star already born. His brother Pat on the lacrosse field blazed quite a trail. I mean, I got the pleasure of watching him play a ton all four years. One of the greatest all-time period in the sport at the D1 level, Spencer. Trying to use that screen, he uses it to pull up. That's Best it. thing you can say there is he bled the clock. That's a heat check too. Yeah. Hey. And Luke wisely, he had no place to go, so he kind of forced the kickball. Now the Crusaders get the reset, run a play on the inbounds. Martindale in the corner, nope. Thought he was going to get it to him. Ooh, and the spin. How about that? Little English there by Golabali. Golabali had a really good game versus Navy. I, I know they come away with a loss, but the big man had some decent footwork down low. He provides really good depth at the post. Yeah, he just didn't really have a space in this game, the way, you know, the pace of it. And Loyola a little sloppy there as far as Threw a fastball at Jones, cutting under the basket. Yeah, Kolobali, he, he's a load in the post. Sophomore big man that will just continue to improve for the oh, Crusaders. Yeah. He had 10 rebounds versus Harvard a few games ago. Six rebounds versus Navy in the last game. And six tonight. So he is a presence. And Holy Cross, this team, again, we talked about, keep on talking about how young they are. Just going to keep on improving, improving as this season goes on. And they're going to continue to play hard any night. You continue to play hard, you'll be in any game. Kenny, Kenny Jones with his third personal, thus the one-on-one -on -one opportunity as Kyrell Luke will step to the line. This is the part of the game where Loyola, no doubt, is being coached up to don't foul in just about every situation. Listen, there's 218 left in this ball game. Chance now to be down by nine. Still a lot of ball game left to be played here, so the Greyhounds have to be able to close this one out. Right, and don't help your opposition by stopping the clock and giving free points away. So Kenny Jones a little frustrated with that call, and I think with himself, five points tonight. He's run the offense well. He's really been a great distributor. He's been excellent all year at that, but that third foul just helped Holy Cross. Oh, Faray just total mismatch. What do you have, about seven or eight inches on his man there in the post? Uh, good flash, too. Good 
job moving without the ball and flashing high, low, catching the ball in the post. 75-64 Loyola. Wow. Tough and hard. Chance for Holy Cross here to set up some pressure here full court. Holy Cross isn't ready to foul early yet. Whoa. Well, that pass yeah. floated over the defense. Martindale had his back turned. Barre, boy, he wants to take him on, but thought better of it. Shot clock down to one. I don't think he got it off no, in time. They're not going to count it. Yeah, he did. And that's something you need to know. You need to know where the shot clock is. Keep that in your head. Again, they bled every bit of that shot clock. That's the only, <laughs> That's good, only thing good, that good thing that happened. That happened there. It's 108 now. So you're talking about an eight-point deficit, and a minute seems like an hour, doesn't it, Jim? Not for Loyola, do not follow. Nothing easy down low. Don't follow your three-point shooters. Great defense there with the hand up. Andrews, and he retrieves that rebound, and he's going to come down and have a chance at the foul line. Yeah, how about your senior coming up in big time moments uh. there? Got to contest. Actually, Loyola got lucky there in that Martindale open look. But Jalen Andrews securing the board now. That's just great, tough man basketball. And Andrews is just in extraordinary shape, too. The energy that that kid has. I mean, it is late in a hard-fought basketball game, and he has played a ton tonight. 15 points and five rebounds. And making a statement here with under a minute to go. He's got a chance to push that lead up to, we're now in a three-possession game. He's looking to make it an even 10-point lead. And Loyola have a chance to set up on defense. Holy Cross has got to hurry. The lead is 10. Loyola not shy about trapping. And now back in the man. Holy Cross taking way, way too much time here for a look. You need to get something fast. Ooh. He'll go to the line. Yeah, Gates was trying to go right at Kenny Jones there with the body. Kenny Jones got a hit and a swipe down. Watch right here, Kenny Jones with the hand, hit on the left yep. arm. Gates pretty ticked off that he didn't make that shot. That would have been a very valuable bucket. But he can get him back both here. Thirty-seven seconds remaining. He makes them both. Yeah. Opportunity now again to set it up in full court pressure for Loyola. You got to get the ball in. Nice lead pass. And Spencer, actually, it started that way, but what a close out here in the middle of the floor. Uh, and I thought Fowry had an opportunity to catch that right there. Spencer, and look at Spencer wondering, Fowry, why didn't you at least attempt to yeah. go get that? And I mean, what do you want me to do? Serve it on a plate to you? <laughs> You're 6'9, kid. 77-69, under 30 seconds. Gates open, no good. Fare gets an important rebound. Now they send Spencer and to the line here? Or I is believe this they Jones? are. There's a quick call. I don't know if they got it out quickly to Jones. Yeah, Kenny Jones now shooting one he on will one. Shoot. He's got five on the night. Kenny Jones. Had some really good looks from the three-point arc. One from four from the three. There aren't many games that Kenny has played in his career at Loyola where he's had barely more points than fouls. Yeah. Yeah, one of the, probably the best knockdown shooter on this roster, Kenny Jones. And look how he's adjusted to the role of being the first option to assist anybody else in the offense. Cam Spencer is just a, you know, a, a Swiss knife with his game. And Fari just couldn't help himself. He said, I'm not giving up the layup, and that's that. I'm up 10. 14.4, looking real good for the Greyhounds. 
And Farway Gary, we talk about how important he is going to be. He's a 3 and D big man. He's got good size and length. Has shoot Shoots well mid-range. And we saw some him tonight catching the ball on the block and finishing. Has to be a little bit more aggressive and, and use some of that strength down in the paint. And the ability to absorb some contact down low and finish and get some at one plays. There he is with his fifth rebound to go with six points, Alonzo Farre. Looking forward to watching him continue to develop as Loyola dribbles it out. And the Greyhounds just took care of business.